Hi guys, this is Mrs. Alice Stars Gaming and today I'm going to do a complete beginner's tutorial for Scum in 2020. But before we get into it, I just wanted to let you guys know, I know that this is going to have a lot of tips so it might end up being a long video. So I will actually add timestamps for each tip in the description below so you can skip to the tips that you need. Anyway, let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is create a character. Now that we're in the character creation screen, the first option you have is to change the name of your character. Now make sure it is something that you like because once you've created your character, you cannot change your name without redoing your whole character. If you forget to create a character name, the game will just give you a default character name. The next option we have is age. Now you can just leave this as default or you can change it. You'll notice as you change it, uh, it'll change some of the points attributed here. And this is basically because the game has decided uh, based on that age, what physical attributes your character would have. So you can change your age here or leave it to default. The next thing we have is your value points. Now, don't worry if you don't get this right straight away because you can come back and change this before finishing creating your character. But here you can set what type of body you have. You can just move it around this cursor or you can actually change the point distribution by clicking the arrows here. So what does this actually mean? So the first one we have is strength. Now the strength decides the amount of points that you can assign to weapon skills, how hard you can punch or take a punch, or how much you can carry before getting tired. Constitution is the amount of points you can assign to movement skills, so running and endurance. Dexterity is the amount of points you can apply to skills that require concentration and hand-eye coordination and intelligence is the amount of points you can apply to skills that would require deeper understanding and focus uh, such as building or stealth and next down here you have the option to have a male or female character and I've got this on concealed mode as you will notice just for the tutorial purposes but if you want the conceal mode off just change that here now for each uh, gender, there is a few different head types depending how you want your character to look. And with the tattoos, the males at this time can have tattoos. Um, however, at this time, the females do not have the option of adding tattoos. Now, another thing I want to point out, with either the male or female, you can change the bust or penis size. Now, the smaller you make the bust or penis, the more points you actually get attributed to your character. So it is worth reducing the size down. And flaws and crimes have not been added at that stage, so don't worry about that section there. But don't forget, like I said, if you don't get these points right, and these points will al allow you to uh, create how much strength you want on each of your skills. If you don't get that right, you can come back to this section. So don't worry too much about that. So once you've set that up, we want to go next. And this is where you get to apply those points to your character. Now, how you want to set up your character is entirely up to you and it depends how you want to play the game. So we'll just run through the different skills here that you can um, apply your points to. Now, when you move any of these, you notice it will go from no skill to basic to medium or advanced. Um, and you can select whatever skill level you want or leave things as no skill. Again, you only have so many points to distribute, so you can't have advanced in everything. But again, like I said, if you uh, move your skills and decide, actually, I need more intelligence or more strength, you can always go click back and uh, redistribute these points here. So we'll just run through this uh, boxing. Obviously, when you're boxing zombies, um, 
it's a good idea to have advanced if you just want boxing skills which is definitely good when you're starting out and you don't have weapons uh, rifles is obviously your rifle skills when you're shooting melee weapons is anything that's basically not a gun so spears or knives uh, handguns pretty self-explanatory and archery you can create bows and arrows in the game or find bows and arrows and you can uh, kill players or zombies or animals with those now the running uh, refers to how fast your character run and the endurance relates to your stamina so the higher your endurance the quicker your stamina recovers in the game and then we go down to dexterity skills we got thievery which is um, the higher probability you have of picking locks so you, um, that's being able to pick enemies locks you can have locks on bases, doors, cars, boxes, wardrobes so that relates to lock picking uh, driving obviously the better driving skill you have the better control of the car uh, demolition relates to whether or not your character can make certain uh, bombs such as improvised claymores uh, just to let you know, to make particular bombs, you do need at least a medium level skill. So if you are looking at adding that to your character, I recommend setting that to medium. You don't necessarily need advanced, but you do need at least medium. Uh, throwing is obviously how accurate your uh, character can throw. Um, in the game, you can throw knives, spears, weapons, axes. Uh, there's, a lot, there's a lot of items you can throw. Um, obviously, you can throw them at enemies or at zombies. Stealth is how well you can sneak around. Um, if you're planning to do a lot of looting or a lot of PvP, stealth is really good to have to sneak around uh, mechs that are at high loot places. Or it's obviously good for PvP as well. And then we go over to intelligence skills. Now awareness refers to um, how well your character can hear surroundings. So again, that's very good for uh, mechs and for PVPing. If you've got high awareness, you will be able to hear other players uh, from further away, hear them more clearly. Um, so that's definitely a good one to have as well. Uh, sniping, obviously self-explanatory, how good your sniping skills are. Camouflage, um, again a bit self-explanatory, that's very good for PvPing as well. Um, how well your char character camouflages when you're uh, planking or hiding in a bush or anything like that. Survival is good to have because that uh, does contribute to some of the crafting options. Um, such as making ammo or making boxes so that is good to have although in saying that as well some players like to start with no survival um, because it's easy to build up fame points by increasing your survival on a character so whether or not you want to be able to make fame points or be able to get into the game and make ammo and boxes easily uh, there's two different options there and lastly, engineering refers to building. So if you are wanting to build a base, obviously the better engineering you have, the better base you can build. Um, for example, you can't build uh, metal palisades, which are the strongest if you don't have engineering skills that requires advanced skill. So if you're planning on building a base, that uh, is definitely an option to look into. Now, in saying that though, once you um, have created your skills, any of those skills can actually be increased throughout the game. So if you haven't put something as high as you want, you can increase it once you're actually in gameplay, but just be aware that most of the skills do require a bit of time to actually increase it. It's not something you can do in a day. So for the purpose of uh, this tutorial, I'm just going to set my character up with uh, some particular skills that I'm going to need to show you guys how to craft or make certain items. So don't necessarily copy what I've just put on. This is not necessarily what I would usually put on, but uh, it's just for purposes of this tutorial. And once you've used all your skill points, you'll notice up here it says zero. If you haven't used some of your skill points, you'll notice there is points still there. And then that's it, guys. Once you've finished uh, 
setting up your character how you want it just simply click create and you'll be launched into the game so we before we get into any tips of the game I'm just going to quickly run over the game controls with you guys so W is forward or to drive forward in a car S is to move back or to reverse in a car A and D are to go sidewards and Q will make you lean left E will make you lean right X is to turn lights on and off in a car and F will be your most used uh, game control as it allows you to interact with objects uh, G is to throw now if you press tab this will take you into your inventory which we will go through and also if you hold tab this will bring up your actions center so you've got a few different actions here we have medical which is actually not in use at this stage but will be introduced by the devs later we have commands so there's different commands here you can make your character uh, tell someone to get down or hurry up point me there's quite a uh, few different commands there we've also got actions so you can sit down lay down squat check the time or whistle uh, now to check the time I'll quickly show you guys this um, to check the time you have to be in first person view so press enter on your keyboard and then go back to your hold down tab go to actions and click check time and there you'll be able to check the time in the game now just a quick note if your character is wearing gloves or a long sleeve jacket you won't be able to see the watch so you need to remove them before you can see the time but I'll show you how to do that throughout this tutorial and just press enter to change your view again the other actions we have here are taunt so you can uh, make different actions towards enemies and lastly we have toilet so obviously if you need to your character to make them pee or poop or vomit which I will go into as well throughout the tutorial all your actions are here and just quickly to go back into the inventory by pressing tab the inventory will show you what clothes you are wearing, what items you are holding in your clothes or backpacks. Um, it'll also show you what you can place on your back. So you've got two slots uh, to place on your back. You can hold guns uh, on your back or sticks or melee weapons such as spears and axes and obviously what you are holding in your hands. There's also a quick access panel and you can add things to the quick access panel by right clicking and click add to quick access panel. Once you have something in your quick access panel, you can simply just hit numbers one, two, three to quickly bring up that item. The next we have is crafting uh, obviously this is where you create items now when you click on any item it will tell you on the left what you need to actually have to create that item so obviously different items have different components to it in order to craft next we have metabolism which will show um, all the health of your character so you've got your heartbeat and blood pressure it will also show here your skills so these are the skills uh, when we created our character strength constitution dexterity and intelligence and it'll show you how many points you have uh, towards each skill now as you build up your skills throughout the games this number here will change and once you uh, reach the number on the right here then your skill will increase either to basic, medium or advanced and you will get a notification on the screen to say that you have upgraded that particular skill to basic, medium or advanced. Next we have the body monitor. Uh, this will tell you how much your character weighs. Um, it'll also tell you how much you are carrying. So if you've got a backpack and you're quite heavy, it'll tell you how much you're carry, carrying down here under gear weight and obviously if you're carrying too much this will go over 100 percent and it'll be in the red um, the other thing you really need to know at this time is your temperature your character can actually overheat if you're carrying a lot and you're running around too much 
and you will get hypothermia. Now, if you get hypothermia, your character will suddenly collapse and it'll tell you here under sicknesses that your character has hypothermia. Um, but we will go into uh, injuries uh, further in the tutorial. And then here on the right, you've got your nutrition monitor. So what you need to take note of here is mostly your cal calorie balance and also your water balance. Obviously, if this goes into the negative, you're going to get a notification on the bottom left hand screen um, saying my character is thirsty, my character is hungry, my character is starving. It'll also tell you if your character needs to pee or poop. Um, and you can also check if your character needs to pee or poop by the colon and bladder volume. If this goes over 100%, obviously your character really needs to pee or poop. Um, so you can make them pee or poop by holding down tab, going to the toilet and pee or poop. Also, when it comes to uh, eating or drinking, you obviously don't want to go over 100% for your stomach. Um, and this is because if you do go over 100%, your character may vomit. And if you do vomit, you actually lose whatever you've eaten or drinking. So that becomes a bit of a waste. So try not to go over 100%. And also with water, try not to drink more than 70 or 80% at a time. Because if your intestine um, has more than 70 or 80%, uh, your character will get diarrhea and again you will lose whatever you've eaten or drinking and it won't go towards your calorie uh, balance or water balance. Next we have journal. This is basically an in-game tutorial so you can uh, do these missions if you want. It is another way to learn the scum game. And here we have squad. So if you're a solo player you don't really need to make a squad. Uh, if you've got multiple people in your uh, playing together, you want to click create a squad. Uh, you can edit here your squad name and it'll tell you here your squad members. You can also leave a squad by pressing leave squad down at the bottom. And the way to invite a squad member is you have to be standing uh, very close to the character and hold down F and it'll say invite to squad. If you do get a squad invitation, you actually have to press tab before it'll let you accept the invitation and you'll get a notification um, on your screen. Now keep in mind you can't invite someone to your squad if they're already in a squad. So if you're trying to invite someone they're already in a squad they have to leave their squad before they can be invited to yours but i do have a more extensive uh, squad tutorial and i will leave a link to that in the video description below and just some other controls guys v will put you into fight mode or take you out of fight mode and obviously your mouse button is your fire or punch uh punch button that's the left mouse button and next we have events so these are uh, like an in-game game, game. Uh, so basically this transports you to a real place on the map and it does happen in real time so if you happen to be in the town where an event is happening you can be killed by the event players so do uh, be careful of that um, so what this basically is, it's basically a death match. So there's different types. There's uh, death, there's death matches, or there's little um, other missions where you play like capture the flag. So usually players will say in chat, um, there's an event up, um, and it will actually notify you there's an event in the top right hand corner. So if you want to join events. Uh, they're really good fun. They're a good way to practice PvP. You can earn fame points uh, by killing other players. Uh, just note it does cost you 10 fame points to join an event. So if you don't have 10 fame points, you won't be able to join. And you'll see that your fame points are in the top right hand corner there. So you're probably wondering how you earn fame points. You earn fame points by increasing your character skills or by killing other players. And I did just realize there was a couple of game controls I left out. You've also got X to lay down 
and just use W and your mouse wheel to get back up or you've also got C for crouch and you can also move around in a crouching position. Now if, before we get into the tips there's one more thing I want to go over which is the map. Now you can bring up the map by pressing M. You'll see the map is broken up into different sectors so D4, D3, D2 etc etc. Now just a little tip, sometimes you might notice players say in chat that they're in C3 keypad 5. Now what that actually means is if you look at your actual number pad on your physical keyboard, uh, you will notice you've got the numbers 7, 8, 9 up the top, 4, 5, 6 and then 1, 2, 3. Now basically if you imagine that each sector is broken up into nine separate little boxes uh, that's basically how we match that up with keypad. So if you imagine for example you're in C3 and you're in the top left hand corner we would call that keypad 7. If you're in the top middle of C3 we would call that keypad 8 and the top right keypad 9. If you're in the middle be keypad 5 and obviously down the bottom you'd have keypad 1, 2 and 3. So if you hear someone say I'm in keypad C, I'm in uh, sector C3 keypad 5, you know that that person is in the middle of C3. Now I'm going to quickly run over the map locations because you'll hear people use terms uh, for map locations so you know where they are. So the green spots are the safe zones. You cannot be uh, killed or kill other players in these zones. I do have a more extensive tutorial on safe zones and I will leave a link in the description below about that. So we'll start from the top. Up in D4 we have the airbase. There is mechs there. This is a high loot area. Um, in the middle this big uh, yellow town in the middle. This is what we call the city. There's a few gun stores there and there is a gym that has high loot spots. Um, it's also good for just looting uh, general items obviously because there's a lot of places to search in the city. And I do have also a tutorial on the gun shop locations and I will leave a link to that tutorial in the description below as well. Over at C2 here we have the uh, dam. Now these are little areas where you see lots of little dots. These are bunkers. Um, you will find mechs there but they are high loot areas. You will find good uh, weapons and guns there. Uh, this little section over here we often refer to as the kangaroo because it's kind of in the shape of a kangaroo. Uh, above here at C3 we call this river town because it's obviously right over a river. Uh, down in B3 in the top part of B3 we call this uh, boot camp. That is also a high loot area and down here you've got the uh, train yard and you'll see the train yard goes right down with the uh, red line uh, down here and the white one that is going from B3 to A3, that is the North and South Quarry. Now right down the bottom at A4, we have a Naval Base or Navy, whatever you want to call it. And in B1 over here, we have the Airfield, which again is a mech area and high loot. Um, now the other smaller sections that you see on the map uh, with all the um, other little orange dots and white roads. Those are towns so there's going to be houses there, garages, barns. Um, so obviously you can search all of those and you can find cars either in towns or the city in garages or just in parking lots. Uh, sometimes just in a field next to a house. Uh, cars just spawn in random uh, spots. Alright, so now that we have uh, covered the game controls and the basics of Scum, let's get into actually playing it. Now the first tip I'm going to give you concerns the lovely red Prisoner Scum outfit that you get when you spawn into the game. 
Now, if you are playing single player, this tip is not going to matter. But if you are playing multiplayer, my first tip is to lose that orange clothing. And that is because that orange clothing is very bright. So it makes you very noticeable to other players, even from a distance. So to remove items of clothing, we want to hold tab and go to inventory. And you can either double click clothing to put it on or off or you can simply just drag it onto the ground and so the vicinity also represents what is on the ground around you now even though we're losing those clothes we're going to make good use of them immediately by uh, crafting them into a bag so what we need to do to make a bag is firstly make a knife so we can cut up the clothes now you can make a knife by going into crafting and the first option there is a stone knife. Now it'll tell you on the left hand side what you need to make a stone knife and what we need is two stones. Now you can find stones and rocks by looking on the ground and wherever you see a little pile of rocks you'll notice that it says F search for rocks. So we'll press F. Now how many uh, stones you find on the ground will vary sometimes you find none sometimes you find one or sometimes you find two or three so as you notice there i can uh, right click and go take in hands and i've i need two stones so we're going to look elsewhere for another rock and there was none in there okay so now that we have two rocks we can go to crafting and you'll notice now that that is grey uh, because we have the components to craft it and so we can click craft. Now whenever you have the components to craft an item it will turn grey. If it is red that means you don't have the components to craft it and if it is black it means your character does not have the skills yet to create that item and obviously you can unlock that by upgrading your skills. Now one tip you really need to remember and I guarantee you'll forget this when you're a beginner in the game I know I did several times but whenever you craft an item it does not automatically pick up the item it actually stays on the ground so before after you've crafted an item and before you run off make sure you actually pick up the item you've just crafted so we're going to take that in hands now we're going to make good use of that orange clothing and turn it into a bag. So what we need to do is go tab, go into crafting. And if you go down here to items and no skill, you will see there's an improvised courier backpack and that is what we want to make. Now it'll tell you here what you need to make that item, which is three rags, some rope and a stone knife. Now, when it comes to crafting, you will notice there's some little arrows here and that means what else you can use besides the first item. So sometimes there's multiple options you can have. So here you can see I can either have rope, I can have improvised rope, I can have tree bark rope, I can have wire or I can have thread. So if I don't have rope but I have uh, thread, that means I can make this item. So what we get need now is some rags and we're going to craft some improvised rope. So we'll go back to our inventory. We're going to right click on our pants and shirt and we're going to go cut into rags. And we're going to do this for both items. Now, as I mentioned, to make this bag, we need rags and rope. So if we go into crafting, you will see here there is improvised rope. Now, for improvised rope, we need five rag strips. So we've only got two here. So what we need to do is cut one of our rags into rag strips. So once we have five rag strips, we can then make some rope. And I've only got four, so we'll cut up another rag. And they, you will see that the improvised rope has turned black because we can craft it. So we're going to go ahead and craft that. So 
So we need three rags, a rope uh, to make the bag. Now that we've got our rope and uh, three rags and a stone knife, we can now craft our backpack. Now the knives are used quite a lot throughout the game to craft items. You can actually pick up knives throughout the game but if you don't have a knife it's obviously very easy just to craft one out of stone. You can also use that as a weapon if you've got the knife in your hands. When you punch zombies um, it'll automatically do more damage if you have a stone knife in your hands. So now we have uh, equipped our backpack now if you've got anything that can hold items whether it's a backpack or a jacket uh, you'll notice it also pops up below and if you click on that it'll tell you what is in your uh, backpack or jacket whatever uh, can hold items so I'll double click on that and equip it so now we have a knife and we have a backpack so now that we have our knife and backpack, you can, as I said, uh, use the knife as a weapon or just box. But I'm going to show you some of the other weapons you can make uh, in case you need to fight zombies or another player and you don't have a gun yet. So the first thing we're going to make is a spear. And we do this by cutting down a bush. Now you do need a knife in order to cut down a bush. But we have our stone knife. So we're just going to press F to cut. And once we've cut the bush. You will notice there is sticks on the ground. And there is long sticks or small wooden sticks. So to make a spear. We're going to go to crafting. And click on improvised wooden spear. Now the wooden spear you can either put in your hands or as I mentioned you have uh, two spaces to hold items on your back. Now if you want to uh, hit something with a spear just click your left mouse key which is your firing or boxing or attack button and that is how you use a spear for a weapon. But I'm also going to show you how to make another weapon, which is a bow and arrow. So again, we need to uh, cut down some more bushes. And if you want to drag items, you just simply click down the item to drag it with you. So we're going to cut down another bush. And you'll see that the uh, bows are here. There is different strength of bows. Um, obviously, the more strength you have on your character, the better uh, bow you can have. Now, to make a bow, we need a long wooden stick, some rope, and a knife. So, again, we need to craft some rope. You can also craft rope with uh, small wooden sticks. So, we'll go into crafting. And down here, we've got tree bark rope. And we need five small sticks, which we have, and a stone knife, so we will craft that item. And once we've crafted the rope, we will have what we need to make a bow, which is a long wooden stick and some tree bark rope. So when we go into crafting, the bows are now black, so we can craft them, and I'm going to choose the 30 bow. And you can hold the bow in your hands, or obviously put it on your back. But of course, if we have a bow, we need to create some arrows. So to make arrows, go into the crafting and you will see here wooden arrows. And to do that, we need small wooden sticks and a stone knife. Now you'll have noticed that my stone knife, as I've used it, has gone down in percentage. It's gone from 100% down to 10%. Once this goes to 0%, this stone knife will actually disappear. So I'm not going to have enough stone knife to make the arrows that I want. So let's go craft another one. And again, remember, whenever you craft an item, it does not automatically pick it up. So make sure you pick up the items that you craft. So to make the arrows, we need small wooden sticks. So again, we're going to cut down a bush. And also, when you cut down a bush and you have long sticks, the long sticks can be cut down into small wooden sticks as well. So in the inventory, we have some long wooden sticks. So I'm going to right click on that and cut into small sticks. 
and you'll notice my item just got destroyed and I've got a notification on the bottom left hand screen that says my item got destroyed and that's because my first stone knife went down to 0%. Now to craft the arrows we need to go to crafting and that is now black so we can craft it and you'll have to craft each arrow one at a time. Now that we have our arrows we can double click on them to pick them up and you will notice that they get automatically stacked in your bag. Now if you don't have room in your bag you can also hold control to shift your item around to rotate your item. Now in order to now use your bow and arrow remember that we have the quick access down the bottom and you can see that my bow is in the number one spot so I can just press number one to put that in my hands. Now in order to uh, shoot an arrow hold down your left mouse to aim where you want it and then just let go to shoot it or it will automatically shoot as well after a certain amount of time has passed. Now you can also collect your arrow again by finding where it went on the ground or if it went into a zombie or animal if you go up to the zombie or animal you can uh, get your arrow back. And before we move on I'm just going to show you a couple of other items uh, that you will need to craft throughout the game that are going to be handy and that is a stone axe and a shovel. So for the stone axe um, that is handy for when you are building because you need logs when you're building and to get logs you need to cut down trees but we need a axe to do that. So for an axe we need a long wooden stick, some rope and also a small stone axe head. So to make the small stone axe head we need two stones. So again we're going to look for some stones. And I've got two so we're going to craft a small stone axe head. So now that we have our small stone axe head I need a long stick and also to make some more rope. So as you can see here I've only cut down two small wooden sticks which isn't enough to make rope. Now I'm just going to drop my spear for a minute. If you need to uh, carry sticks around you can also bundle your sticks down here. You will see you can craft a small bundle of wooden sticks or a large bundle of wooden sticks. And all you need is more than one uh, wooden stick to craft that item. And now that I have my bundle I can carry that on my back. And when I want to uncraft that and turn that just into sticks again and not a bundle of sticks, I just have to right click and press uncraft. So now I'm going to head to another bush uh, because I didn't get enough sticks from the first one to make a rope. So now I'm going to uncraft that bundle of sticks. And we now have enough to craft some rope. And once we've done that, uh, we have a long wooden stick on the ground. We have our small stone axe head and some rope. So we have enough to craft an axe. And again, an axe is something you can uh, carry on your back as well. Now that we have our axe, you'll notice when we go up to a tree, it'll now say that we can cut down a tree. And when you cut down a tree, you will get um, wooden logs. How many you get depends on the size of the tree. And you will also notice that there will be a branch. The branches can be cut. This is our tree branch. The tree branches can be cut down to get small and long wooden sticks. So now that we have cut down a tree, I'm going to show you guys how to make a shovel. Now shovels are really good uh, throughout the game because if you have boxes and you don't have a base yet or if you just want to hide a box somewhere, you can actually bury uh, a box with your loot in the dirt. And to do that we need a shovel. You can also bury some mines as well. So for a shovel, we need some rope, a long wooden stick and a wooden plank. Now to get a wooden plank you just need to right click on a wooden log and click cut into wooden planks. 
And then to make our shovel, we need to craft some rope. And once we've crafted our rope, we have a long wooden stick, our rope and a wooden plank, so we can then craft our shovel. And again, a shovel is something that you can carry on your back. And while we have our shovel out, as I mentioned, you can use this to uh, bury chests uh, with your loot in it. Now, in order to bury it, you just need to right click and click bury. You do have to have the shovel in your hands. Now, when you bury items, it does create a small dirt mound. So in order to hide this, you can uh, place these in bushes or it, you can even place it where a tree was. If you've cut the tree down and the tree will spawn later over your buried uh, item. So we're just going to click bury. and our box is now buried. Now if you can't remember where you've buried an item, all you need to do is hold down your right mouse button which will put you into focus mode. And you will see that there is a icon there that has a little shovel with a dig and that shows you where your item is buried. Now when you're in focus mode, you can only see the items that you or your squad members have buried. You won't see an, um, an icon for any enemies buried items. And you will also notice that that created a bit of a small dirt mound. So that is how you recognize if a buried box is around as well. You will also notice that it says decays in a certain amount of days. Uh, boxes will only last a certain amount of time in the ground. So if you don't come back and unbury your box, your box will actually disappear in 18 days. And you'll notice if you press F, there's also the option to unbury your box. Uh, so once you've decided you want to get your box back, just come up and click F for unbury. Now while we are talking about uh, boxes, I will show you there is three types of boxes you can craft. However, uh, whether or not you can craft all the boxes depends on your survival skill level. Um, so we, there's three different types of boxes. There's a basic box which is the wooden chest. And to make the wooden chest you need eight wooden planks and some rope. To make a medium box, you need planks and some metal scrap. And to make the advanced, you need metal scrap, nails, a toolbox, and a lead plate. And you'll notice that the advanced one is grayed out for me, and that is because my character does not have enough skill, survival skill, to make that. So until I've increased my survival skill to advanced, that will be grayed out for me. Once I've unlocked that though, I will be able to craft that item. So in order to make a box, click on craft and you'll notice it'll come up with a blueprint. So we press F to place the blueprint and then it'll tell you what you need to uh, put in there in order to make it. So we'll press fill with wooden plank because we already have some wooden planks cut up, uh, but not enough. So let's go ahead and cut up some more wooden planks. And if your blueprint does turn red, uh, that is because there is something lying on the ground blocking your blueprint. So here you can see that two of my planks are blocking the blueprint. It won't let you finish a blueprint unless it's blue. So just move those items to get them out of the way of the blueprint and to turn the blueprint blue again. Now we also need some rope to finish the box so we will go ahead and craft some rope and we will go down our tree bark rope. We need to cut up some small wooden sticks. Now you will notice for the wooden chest it says we need a 5 meter rope but we don't have a 5 meter rope. But we can craft the tree bark rope and you'll notice it says times two which means we need two of these to finish that. So let's craft some tree bark rope. And there we go we have our wooden chest there and it comes up here so this is everything that you can hold 
in your chest now obviously uh, the more advanced the chest the more you can hold so the improved wooden chest can hold more than a normal wooden chest and then the advanced metal chest can obviously hold more than each of those now before we start running around the map another thing you need to know at the start of the game is how to build a bed or a shelter now when you die in the game you have the option to respawn now you can either respawn uh, randomly which means you'll just respawn somewhere random on the map you can spawn in a sector so again that is the sectors on the map you can pick, pick a particular sector or you can spawn at your shelter so your shelter is either a bed or a shelter now down here in the blueprints we have either a shelter or an improvised bed now if you make either one of those this will allow you to spawn at your shelter now when you respawn it does cost you fame points so however how much fame points it costs you will depend on each server but uh, random spawning will always cost the least sector spawning will cost uh, the medium amount and shelter spawning will always cost the most fame points so if you don't have enough fame points to spawn at your shelter you won't have any choice but to sp spawn at a sector or uh, randomly so you do need uh, to try and keep your fame points up so you can spawn back at your shelter if you need to so in order to make a bed we need uh, three long wooden sticks some tree bark rope four rags and an axe or a knife or a sword so again don't forget you can click on these arrows to check what other items you can use so I have one wooden stick here so I'm gonna chop down a tree and use the branch to get some sticks and also some craft some rope so once we've got our sticks and our tree bark rope and I just need a little bit more tree bark rope we also need some rags to finish off our bed now obviously uh, you can destroy another player's um, bed or shelter so it's best to um, have your bed obviously in your base or hidden somewhere either hidden inside um, a house or hidden in a bush and you will notice that once you have a bed or a shelter down uh, yes yeah, so don't forget you can craft a bed or a shelter but once you have that down you will notice when you go to the map that you will have a H where your bed or shelter is and that represents home so when you decide to respawn at your shelter that is where you will respawn at your bed wherever your H is now if you happen to be in game and you've noticed that your H has disappeared from the map that means either a player has destroyed your bed or shelter or your bed or shelter um, has disappeared because it hasn't been maintained so any building items that you craft will actually expire if you don't maintain it so you'll see that this expires in 14 days now to maintain a building item just hold down F and click maintain and that timer will reset now this is a drop you will see drops will come up on the map as a parachute icon they stay for about 20 minutes after that uh, the drop will actually explode now you have to uh, leave the vicinity before the drop explodes or you will die from the explosion you will know when it's about to explode because it will actually start beeping now some of these drops have zombies in them and some don't whether it does or not is just random and when you go into the drop you will see you can search these items now what it'll have in it varies on each drop some will have guns some will have toolboxes 
Um, some will have backpacks or clothing. Some will have medicine or bandages and also have uh, food. So that is one way you can find food is from drops. Now the next thing you want to focus on is your character's food and water. Now you can actually find food and water by searching uh, towns or drops but if you are not near a town or a drop there is other places that you can search for food and water. One of the first places you can find food is by searching these small logs and they will have lava in them. Now of course smaller items like this isn't going to have a lot of calories. To check how many calories something has just hold down control and it'll bring up the amount of calories, how much water is in that item and also fat, sugar and carbs. Now to eat that just right click and click eat. If something has more than one portion of food there'll be the option to eat or to eat all. Another item you can eat is mushrooms, which you can find around forests. There's all different types of mushrooms. Um, some are white, some are yellow, some are red. You can either press F to eat, or if you hold down F, you can also pick it up if you want to eat it later. And as you can see, this has uh, 10 items of food that you can eat. So you've got the option to eat or to eat all. But just be careful with eat all that you uh, don't overfill your stomach. As you can see, food will show up as yellow and water will show up as blue. So that tells you how much food and water you have in your stomach. And you will slowly notice that that food will go down and move into your intestine. And from there, it will go down into your colon and then to your bladder. There is also uh, some shrubs that you can search for food. Uh, those shrubs didn't have anything, but sometimes you can find berries. You can also find crops through the game, such as corn or sunflowers for sunflower seeds, or zucchinis or potatoes, to name a few. There is also particular trees that you can search for food and find different fruits, such as apples or pears or cherries. Another place you can search for food is at the side of rivers. You can actually search the dirt for worms. Um, again, these don't contain a lot of calories though, but they're definitely good if you are desperate for food. You can find fountains or uh, drinking coolers um, around. You can even make your own well for drinking. The well is down here under medium engineering improvised well. Um, however, if you're just near a body of water such as a lake or a river, you will notice you can also drink from there and again the water will show up in your metabolism. Now cars can be found just at various locations on the map. You might just find them in a field next to a town like this or in garages or parking lots. You will notice when you find a car, it won't necessarily be at full health or full battery or full fuel. Um, but to learn more about cars, I do actually have an extensive uh, car tutorial. So I will put a description at the, a link in the description below for the uh, car, car tutorial. Now, if you have been injured in the game, you will see on your character your hub in the bottom left hand corner that where you have been injured will appear red. Now in order to speed up healing from your injuries you can actually lay down and this will help speed up recovery of your injuries. However if you have been injured you do need to patch first so that your body does stop bleeding and the healing process can begin. Now you can either do this one of two ways. You can use an emergency bandage and right click and click patch wounds. If you don't have a bandage on you however you can cut up any type of clothing into rags and you can then patch your character using the rag. So to do that we just right click and click patch wounds. You'll also notice that if you have been injured under your metabolism 
it will say under sickness, physical injury, and whether or not you have treated it. Uh, by treating, it means whether or not you have patched. And your character's redness will go down as you begin to heal. If you have been injured uh, badly or if you've injured your leg, you will also notice that your character will have a limp. This will go away as your character starts to heal. You can also take away the limping effect by taking a painkiller, but make sure you do only take one. If you do take too much medication, your character can actually overdose on medication. Um, if you do overdose on medication, you can stop the overdose effect by making your character vomit by holding down the tab, clicking the toilet icon and selecting vomit. When you also get injured, there is different levels of injury. There is level 0, level 1 and level 2. If you are on level 1, you can also heal yourself with a rag strip as well as a rag or bandage. Or you can even use the plant aloe vera, which you will find around the map. And for level 2 though, you do need an actual rag or bandage. You can't use rag strips for a level 2 injury. You can also get food by killing animals in the game. Uh, make sure when you are going to kill an animal, it is best to sneak up on them because if you make too much noise, they can run away. Animals can also uh, attack you and knock you over and you will need to heal yourself from that. There is many different animals in the game, such as goats and horses, bear, boars, birds, donkeys, uh, deer. Um, of course, bears are the hardest to kill and will take uh, more damage than the other animals. And there's also other animals planned to come into the game in future, such as cows and wolves and fish and the ability to fish. So in order to get meat from your animal, once you've killed it, you need to have a knife or an axe on you and press chop. You will then notice that you will get uh, the guts of the animal and animal skin and also the skinned animal. The animal skin can actually be used to craft rugs if you want to put uh, rugs in your base. Uh, you can find the rugs under basic engineering. You can also use the skin to craft your own water containers. Now to get the meat from the animal that you then need to uh, chop the skinned animal and this will break the animal up into different sections such as the uh, torso or the legs and you need to then chop each of those in order to get meat or fat that you can eat. You can also use the animal heads to create trophies or place some of the animal heads on a spear. Now at this point in the game it does not matter whether you eat the uh, meat raw or cooked. This may change later with the developers but I will show you how to cook meat in case you do want to cook meat. There's also different recipes that you can craft not only with meat but with other items. You'll find the recipes under food so you can make things such as a, a skewer with meat you can make sausages, there's other things you can make such as spaghetti bolognese. Um, again though, this doesn't give you uh, anything additional uh, from eating cooked food. However, as I mentioned, this may change later in the game. So in order to cook your meat, the first thing we need to do is have a fire. There is different options for a fire. The easiest one to make is the improvised fireplace which only takes five small wooden sticks and you can also use a rag, a rag strip, a tinder or brake oil or gunpowder or paper to fuel that fire. Now in order to get tinder you need to chop down one of these logs that lays on the ground and you'll notice that when you finish chopping, not only do you have logs, but you will have tinder. You can also make a fire ring or a larger bonfire, which takes sticks and logs as well as something to fuel the fire. And there is also an improvised barbecue.
so at the moment we're going to go ahead and make a bonfire so press craft and place your fire wherever you would like it and we need five sticks now keep in mind too wherever you place your fire once it's lit it will create smoke which can uh, obviously attract other players if they see it so you can actually make fires indoors as well if you want to hide your fire and smoke once you have created your fire too, um, you will notice over time that your fire is going to look different. It's going to look like it is slowly breaking down. Um, if that happens, you can actually fuel your fire with small wooden logs. You can get small wooden logs by either cutting down bushes or by cutting down these really thin trees. Once you have a small wooden log, you simply need to place it in your hands and hold down F and the option there to fuel fire with small wooden log will be there if your fire needs repairing. Now in order to start a fire, you will need either matches or a lighter and actually be holding it in your hand and once you do, you can light fire. However, if you don't have matches or a lighter on you, you can actually make your own match with the fire drill and for that we just need two long wooden sticks and once we have our two long wooden sticks we can craft that and you also need a knife or an axe of some sort and as I mentioned you do need to actually be holding this in your hand not just have it on your body and then we can click on F and click light fire and as you see, this will then start to create smoke, which can be noticeable by other players. Now, if you ever want to put your fire out, you simply need to hold F again and just click put out. So once you have your fire going, in order to cook meat, you actually just need to place the meat on the ground near the fire. Now, if you do have your meat too close, it will actually burn and eventually disappear. So make sure you don't place it too close to your fire. Um, also, if you have it too far away, it won't cook. So you do need to get the distance a bit right. Now, in order to check if your distance is good or not, or whether or not your meat is cooked, simply hold down F on your meat and click check taste. Now this will tell you whether or not your meat is cooking. At the moment this says raw but hot, which means that it is actually cooking but it is not cooked yet. If it's too close it will actually say burning. And you can keep clicking check taste to check how long, whether or not your meat is cooked. It does take a little bit of time so you will have to be a little bit patient. And once your item is cooked, obviously you can eat it as normal. But yes, as I mentioned at the moment, uh, whether you eat cooked meat or raw meat, neither has an advantage at this time, but it will probably be added later. Another thing fires are good for is drying your clothes or backpacks. To know if your clothes are wet, simply hold tab. And in your inventory, you will notice there is a water droplet sink a symbol next to your clothes and bags. If your items are wet, these symbols will show as blue. Now, obviously they can get wet if you swim in a lake or river or if it has been raining. In order to dry your clothes, you just need to be near the fire and you will notice that the blue in the water drop symbol will slowly go down until it turns gray again, which means that your clothes are now dry. Now it is a good idea to dry off your clothes because if your clothes are wet it does mean that you are heavier and you will be slower when running. And towns or cities are obviously great places for looting and fighting items. You can search cars, you can search houses and items in houses simply just by going up to the object and clicking search, F for search. Now, there's all different items you can find in towns, whether it be crafting items or clothing or food or even guns or ammo. And obviously you can find um, higher loot such as guns and ammo and vests and bombs 
at bunkers. However, be aware that at bunkers you will find not only military or exploding zombies, but also mechs. Now the mechs are obviously easier to sneak past if you have more stealth on your character. But we are actually going to create a tutorial on how to get in and out of each mech area, so don't forget to subscribe for those. Now in order to load your guns with ammo, obviously some guns have magazines and some do not. Uh, for example, the shotgun or a hunter does not require a magazine. Now in order to load your gun, you can simply just press R as long as you have the ammunition on you. You can also unload ammo by right clicking and click unload ammo. Now if you do have a weapon on you that does require a magazine, in order to load that ammo you need to unpack the ammo from the box by right clicking and select unpack. And then you can drag the ammo into the magazine and click load ammo. Now to load the magazine into your gun, you can either drag it to your weapon and click equipped or you can take the gun in your hands and press R and it will load the magazine. You can also drag attachments such as scopes or rails onto those weapons as well. Now if for any reason you are unsure what type of ammo that a weapon takes, you can always hold down control and hover over the weapon and it will tell you there what sort of ammo it takes so the AK for example takes 7 by 62 times 39 millimeter ammo it'll also tell you some other statistics about the weapon such as how much ammo it can hold in this case the AK holds 30 in a magazine uh, the weight of the ammo the weight of the weapon and some other statistics there now at this point in time, uh, washing your clothes does not have any additional benefits other than obviously how they look visually. But if you want to wash your clothes, what you need to do is have a bar of soap. You need to take that in your hands and be near a body of water. And from there, press tab to go into your inventory and you can right click on the different items and click wash. So that is the beginner's guide to scum. Um, obviously the other thing in scum is uh, your loot. You can either, as I mentioned, put that in a box and bury it or make a base. Um, I won't go into how to make a base. I do actually have tutorials available on how to build a cabin, um, how to protect your base from raiding and also a flag and lock tutorial. So I will leave links to those videos in the description below as well as links to any other tutorials that will be useful to any beginners such as a car tutorial and don't forget if you want to request a tutorial just leave a comment in the YouTube videos if you'd like to request anything or you can contact us via Alistars Gaming on Instagram or Twitter. Alright thanks guys and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and don't forget to hit that subscribe button to follow us for more tutorials.